Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sari Sabban and this is a video tutorial on how to computationally design a vaccine. The underlying algorithm for this script is mainly PyRosetta. So if you are not familiar with PyRosetta, head on to my video on how to install it. The link is in the description. I would assume you know how to install Python libraries. All the libraries required for this script are in the GitHub repositories readme file. So I will not cover that here. This tutorial is also found at the end of the readme file. And this video is just to visually show you what you should be getting. So let us start. First, we head to my GitHub repository, uh, Sari Sabban, Vax Design, and clone that repository. So you should be familiar with the GitHub. Uh, you just have to write the command git clone and the uh, link, and that will clone the entire repository for you. Then we will head on to the rcsb.org server and download the receptor that we're interested in. In this case, it's 2Y7Q. This is the protein that contains the piece of amino acid sequence that we are interested in targeting. We would call that the motor. Then we will head on to download the scaffold. Now, here's a point. Searching for the scaffold is very difficult and it will not be covered here. I have already performed this search and I've already identified that this protein is the scaffold and, and therefore I'm going to use it. But searching for the scaffold is actually quite difficult and I will try to cover that in a separate video. In our case, the scaffold is 3HZ7, so we will download that as well. We of course download all the files in PDB format. Then we will move the files into the Vax Design directory. Let's check out our site of interest. You can see I am marking the receptor in red and pay attention that the receptor is in chain A. This will be useful later on when we write the command for the script. Then as I turn the structure here, you can see that I am marking our motif, which is in chain B. And our motif is between uh, the amino acids uh, 332 and 337. The amino acids NPRGVS which I am marking in blue. This is our motif, and this is the piece that we would like to graft onto the scaffold. If we check out the scaffold, you will realize that there is a position where we can graft this motif onto. Again, searching for the scaffold is very difficult and requires uh, a separate setup, which I have done in the past and will not be covered in this video. So we will take that motif and graft it onto that scaffold at that position. Now we will not need the PDB file that contains our motif. That's because I've designed the script that you just give it the PDB ID that contains your motif, its chain and its location and it downloads that PDB for you. So that's why I'm deleting the PDB file that contains our motive. Now let me just load my Python virtual environment and then I will change the directory and enter the uh, Vax design directory. That's the content. Before we start, we have to clean the scaffold PDB file. By cleaning, I mean we remove everything that is not a polypeptide. So as you can see here, I'm removing all the headers, uh, everything. We will not need it for our computation. And I only keep the section of the file between the first amino acid and the last amino acid. And as you can see, after the uh, TER or the termination tag, I also remove everything else. Everything else which includes the water molecules, small organic molecules, any other non-amino acid atoms, for example, the sulfur atom here, all of this will be removed. And we end up with a clean PDB file. As you can see here, only the polypeptide chain remains and everything else was removed. Now we can start. 
The command I'm writing now is the full protocol. The entire protocol from the start all the way to the end. So technically, the only thing you need is the information about the location of your motive and, of course, the scaffold. As you can see here, the only file I'm providing is the scaffold file. And the script will go from excising the motive, removing the receptor, performing the grafting, then performing sequence design, submitting our FASTA sequence to get our fragments for the ab uh, uh, fault simulation. All of this will be performed using just this command. So what will happen now is I'm going to demonstrate this command and show you the results. And then we will repeat everything, but give you every single step as a breakdown. And this also helps in case you want to adjust your structure without having to repeat the entire protocol. So here we would write python vaxdesign.py and dash p for protocol. Then the motifs pdb id, the 2y7q, the receptor chain, which is A, the motive chain, which is B, the motive start amino acid, which is 332, uh, and the end amino acid, which is 337, the scaffold PDB, which we have in the same directory, and then the fixed backbone design, sequence design. There are several sequence design protocols that are included. Uh, in this case, we are going to choose the fixed backbone design. There's also flexible backbone design, and surface. Again, this will depend on your particular project, which I'm going to discuss later on. Then the last thing is your Robetta user ID. If you head down to the Robetta fragment server, you will need to register a username there, which is for free, it takes literally one minute, but it will allow the script to auto submit your faster sequence to this server without you having to do this manually every time. And of course, once your computation, once the server has completed your fragment generation, it auto downloads it and performs a very small evaluation, which I will show you. The idea behind this script is to automate most of the repetitive aspect of computational vaccine design. So I hope this command is clear. All the items in this command are clear. Now we execute this command and it will take a while. What will happen is the script will go through the protocol 20 times. So it will effectively generate a directory for you and within that directory you will have 20 designed structures. Now while you watch the speed up of the computation, I'm not going to perform 20 uh, structures, I'm going to stop at around 9. But as you see the uh, speed up, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. Don't think of this protocol as the only way to design vaccines. The system is not yet perfect and has several shortcomings that you have to pay attention to. For example, the sequence design step, it's not perfect. Vaccine design is difficult. It can take months and months, sometimes years to get a successful vaccine because remember, the computational step is not perfect. And even if you get a successful computation, after the computation, you may not get a crystal structure for you to prove that what you've computed actually exists physically. And even after all of that, your vaccine may not be successful uh, uh, in vivo and it will not elicit an immune response in the host. So think of this system as just another tool that you can add to your toolbox to design a vaccine. You must have a background in immunology and structural biology for you to understand what is happening and to be able to evaluate the outcome of the script and judge the quality of the protein structure. This is not plug and play. I hope I make this clear. This script is designed to automate much of the repetitive aspect of computational vaccine design using PyRosetta to free you so you can concentrate on the difficult aspects and the unstable aspects of vaccine design, which will depend on your particular project. So the output of the script is by no means a guaranteed vaccine. Okay, this is very important for you to understand. You have a goal, and this is kind of a tool that gives you a direction but it doesn't give you an answer. 
you must find the ideal scientific way to evaluate the efficacy of your resulting computed protein structure, and that will depend on your particular research project. Now that our computation has completed, you see that I've terminated the script just after we have generated nine structures. And these are nine structures that contain the motif grafted onto your scaffold and the scaffold sequence designed. What is meant is that the scaffold may not accept a graft onto it, the motif, because it disrupts the backbone. Therefore, we are attempting to change the sequence of the scaffold in order to accommodate this new motif. So we're basically mutating the entire protein except for the motif, of course. This doesn't work every time. It's an extremely unstable protocol. So we have to fold or simulate the fold of our protein in order to, to get an understanding whether this sequence was successful or not. Which is why after the sequence design step, we take the FASTA sequence of our protein and submit it to the Robetta fragment server. And the idea here is the Robetta fragment server will generate fragments for us and secondary structure predictions. And these files will be used in the ab initio relax folding simulation. And if you're not familiar with the ab initio relax folding simulation, head on to my video that discusses this in detail. But what you will need is the uh, three mer fragment file, the nine mer fragment file, the uh, secondary structure prediction file, the FASTA file, and your PDB structure to compare the uh, folding simulation to your designed structure. But instead of going through the full ab initio simulation, which takes time and requires a supercomputer, uh, here I have a little evaluation, um, fragment quality evaluation, which is the plot frag uh, PDF, which gives you the lowest root mean square deviation of uh, the fragments at every position. So it basically shows you what the best result from the, from the ab initio fault simulation looks like without having to run the simulation. Because if you get a bad quality fragments, you know your simulation isn't going to work. So there's no reason to waste your time performing it. If you have good quality fragments, you know there is a probability, but of course it can still fail, but there is a probability that the simulation can, can work. And as you can see here in the, uh, if you open the plot, uh, you see the root mean square deviation at, of the best lowest RMSD a fragment at every position and the average RMSD of the entire structure. The ab initio simulation will not perform better than this. Again, you still have to perform the ab initio simulation because this is just an indication. It's not a result. You still have to perform the simulation. And of course, as you can see here, every single structure has the fragments, has the fragment quality plot, everything is ready for you to perform an ab initio simulation. And that is the end of the script. Here, if we take the original scaffold and superimpose it with the design structure, you can see that they still maintain the same structure and they have a very low root mean square deviation between them. It's 0.438 as uh, calculated by PyMole. But the difference is obviously the sequence. You can see that the original scaffold has a sequence that is different than the designed structure, yet maintaining our motif. Our NPRGVS motif is there in its three dimensional structure. Now let us repeat that protocol, but breaking down the steps. The first thing we will do is to isolate the motif. And as you can see here, I am writing python vaxdesign.py tag m for motif uh, 2y7q, the b chain where the motif exists and the location, the start and end positions of the motif, 332 and 337. And when I execute this command, the script will download the structure for me 
and isolate the motif and then delete the structure. So I only have the motif.pdb file. And you can see here, this is what our motif looks like, exactly as expected. Then the graft protocol requires us to provide the receptor, like an anchoring point, the structure that binds that motif. And as you can see here, we will isolate the receptor by writing python vaxdesign.py dash r for receptor, then 2y7q and chain a. So that entire chain is our receptor. And let's check it out. We will get the receptor.pdb file and this is our receptor exactly as expected. Now we will perform the grafting. So we will write python vaxdesign.py dash g for grafting. Then we will give it the receptor.pdb file, the motif.pdb file, and the scaffold.pdb file. When the grafting is done, you can see here that it gave you the position, which is very important to pay attention to, it gave you the position where the motif was grafted. So this is the new position of the motif on the scaffold between positions 61 and 66. So here, if we check it out, you can see that this is the scaffold containing our grafted motif. As expected, the sequence is NPRGVS and it's between positions 61 and 66. Now we can perform the sequence design step. Our command will be python vaxdesign.py dash d for design and then the protocol. For this project, I found that the fix backbone design protocol works best, but you have the flexible backbone protocol as well. You just have to change the command or the surface protocol. The surface protocol basically only changes the surface of the protein. So you have to pay attention to the exact amino acids that you give it because it will mutate anything. It will mutate any position you give it. So it's preferable that you give it only the surface amino acids. And of course, making sure that these uh, positions do not include your motif, otherwise it will be mutated. Anyway, going back, let's uh, use the fixed backbone design protocol and we'll give it the grafted um, structure and obviously the position of the motive, so it will not change it. You have to give it the position, which is 61 to 66. Once the design step is complete, let's check out our structure. You can see the, this is our designed structure. And if we superimpose the grafted structure onto it, you can see it still maintains the same structure but now it contains a different sequence. This massive mutation of the protein is quite unstable, so it's very important to, to simulate the folding of the protein. And obviously, if you get a successful simulation, you need to solve the structure physically through NMR or crystallography, because again, the computation, even though it's quite good, isn't perfect. Now that we have a, designed, a sequence designed structure, we would submit the FASTA sequence to the Robetta fragment server in order for it to generate fragments so we can use it for the ab initio fold simulation. And here we will write python vaxdesign.py dash capital F, then our structure, then our username for the server. And the script will automatically generate the FASTA sequence for you submit it to the server and keep on looping, I believe every five or 10 minutes, probably every five minutes uh, to make sure when your job is queued, when it's active and when it's running. And once it's finished running, it downloads the files, renames them, and then produces the uh, fragment quality plot. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Remember, that the outputted structures do not guarantee an effective vaccine. You still have to perform rigorous science and evaluate the output correctly in order to identify whether it is useful or not. Thank you for watching.